Hey there, it's Bronze and Modern Gods. That's what the logo says. That's what the music <laughs> tells you. I'm John, and that guy is... I'm Richard. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? We are on Facebook and Instagram at Bronze and Modern Gods. We're also on the worldwide interwebs at bronzeandmoderngods.com. If you like the video, like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you're not watching us on YouTube, then leave us a review and rate us on your favorite podcast platform. Beep, beep, boo. Today, by popular demand, our topic is our underrated DC Silver Age comics. What is out there that is completely under the radar? We'll help you navigate that. We also have our 25-year rule underrated books of the week. But first, Richard, this is all you. Hot book of the week. What is Hot book of the week this week is Strange Academy number 13, the Art Adams Magic Variant. Boing! <clears throat> yeah, Art, Art, Art has a, a history of creating these amazing profile uh, covers. Uh, my personal favorite is Young Allies number six, where he does Firestar. But he's, he's done a, a number of magic covers, including this one. This one uh, is just out. It's selling already for between 18 and 22 on eBay raw. Uh, and I see it, it, it going up in value. It's, <laughs> it's kind of easy to see why. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. you know, her eyes are up here, fellas. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous cover. Uh, and like I said, he, he, he specializes in, in that look. So um, if you're a fan of art Adams, Apparently he's kind of polarizing. Some people like Art Adams. Really? Art. Yeah, yeah, and other people don't. I, I personally, I, I don't know how you couldn't. Uh, that I will say he is a lot like uh, 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 J. Scott Campbell in that his art, his characters have a similar look. Um, you know, it, it's if you look at the, the characters for Firestar and you look look at the the different uh, magic. Um, He's done uh, Scarlet Witch, who also has that same kind of look. And if you look at all these different covers, they do, they are reminiscent of each other in some way. Um, but I, I still think they're you know the differentiation is significant enough to really really be attractive. I, I I'm a big fan of his work. That shocks me. I thought Art Adams was like Sarah Lee. Nobody doesn't like Art Adams. <laughs> well, some people don't like Adam Hughes. I mean, it's, it's, hey. there's different different <laughs> tastes for people. Uh, and, you know, to me, I say collect what you like. And this is definitely something I like. All right. Well, I, I picked it and I knew uh, it would please you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I, I don't have one yet. I don't have one. I need to pick one up. Um, I'm surprised they don't have one. I, I saw it when I came out and uh, just have been kind of busy. But I will add one to my collection. Well, those character spotlight covers for Strange Academy have been going on for 13 mm -hmm. issues now. So who expected this one to... Uh, to uh uh take flight the way it has but yeah Liliana. It, it, it you know it kind of kind of pisses me off i was i was buying every one of those du duplicates of every one of those character yeah. spotlight care uh issues and i kind of trailed off with with uh, strange academy not because i don't like the series it's just you can only read so much at a, at a certain time so i i kind of stopped reading this and then this came up so this one yeah. i get. If you don't follow Art Adams on Instagram, you should if you're a fan because he actually breaks down the creation of this cover uh, and it's really cool to see how it came together. So check that out if you have not. Uh, now it is time for our main topic. Uh, a few of you have suggested this and we finally listened to you. So here you go. <laughs> it is our favorite underrated DC Silver Age comics. What is out there? that has not been scooped up and, and gone through the stratosphere yet. You can still get in fairly cheap. We're going to help you uh, with a few of our suggestions. Richard, what's your first one? My first one is showcase number 23, not number 22, which is the first appearance of Hal Jordan, uh, the Green Lantern, but 23, the second appearance. And, and I think this is a trend you'll see, and you'll see, at least in my picks, but just in the industry in general, when the, num the first appearance starts to be priced out of mere mortals. And uh, that is definitely the case for showcase number 22. People start looking at the second appearance as a, a, a pickup and a way of acquiring that character. So now I'm not saying this thing is cheap. This is still a Silver Age key. It's, it's, it's still from the, from the late 50s. So it's not cheap, especially in high grades. But it's definitely more affordable than showcase 22. It's got beautiful Gil Kane art. 
the GPA on this book is the 9.4 is the highest on uh, GPA. Mm. As a matter of fact, there's only one 9.4. There are 373 other graded books. The nine, uh, I, I'm not going to talk about the 9.4 sale because the last one was like 20, 2013. So it's really irrelevant. The, the 7.0 is about $1,600 right now. And a 6.0 is $600. Those are both sales from this year. And you can see that the price is, is still affordable. Still I mean, affordable, right. Yeah. I see the second appearances are really starting to move up. Uh, and so this is a good call because, I mean, even things like Star Wars number two uh, mm -hmm. is going up, which people forget is actually the first comic book appearance of Obi-Wan. Uh, yeah, that's really getting 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 a little heat behind it right now. Yeah, but the second appearance of Hal Jordan in comics, a Green Lantern, Silver Age Green Lantern, why not? Uh, that And it's still affordable in the upper mid grades. So uh, good choice. My uh, first choice is also a showcase issue. A little earlier, showcase number six, the first appearance of the Challengers of the Unknown by Jack the King Kirby. <laughs> now, Richard, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this story. Four people are on a flight that mm -hmm. crashes. They all survive and they vow to stick together to solve mysteries and help mankind. Does this sound familiar? A little bit, a little bit. And uh, what year did this come out? Uh, 1957. These four, mm -hmm. these four characters are fantastic. <laughs> I would say they're very close to a fantastic four in terms of prototypes. Mm. When you consider this, as I do, as almost a, a dry run for the Fantastic Four, the prices on this book are insanely low, especially when you consider it came out just two issues after the premiere of the Silver Age Flash in showcase mm -hmm. number four, which goes for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. There are the highest graded uh, versions of this book. There are three 9.0s on the CGC census. Those are the highest graded. The most recent high-grade sale was for an 8.5 last year for $4,680, which, you know, a, an 8.5 for an Avengers 4 is $8,000. So it's about half that. And it's just, you know, Challengers, always a little bit of a B-level uh, group. They don't even have an ongoing series right now. Uh, revivals here and there just never stuck. But it's Jack Kirby. It's Silver Age DC. It's a first appearance. Uh, come on, people. Get with it. <laughs> Is there Hard to See Lass and Stretch Man? And <laughs> oh, they have real superhero <laughs> names like Ace, Rocky, Professor. <laughs> so, you know, these are these are manly men. Okay. Challengers. All right. What's your next book? Uh, my next book is is a not not, not surprising a Legion of Superheroes uh, book. That's Superman 147, the first appearance of the Legion of Supervillains, not superheroes. And uh, this is an interesting book. It's got the cover is an homage to uh, Adventure Comics number 247, which is the first appearance of the Legion. You got. Instead of uh, the original uh, characters, you've got Cosmic King, oh. Lightning Lord, oh. and Saturn Queen. Why didn't they just change the names? Of that? Those are better names than... Those are kind of better names. You know? I think so. I think so too. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lightning Lord. I mean, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, you know, it, it all came about because, you know, Lex Luthor is in prison and, and he got the ability to work on the repair shop. And somehow in the repair shop in the 19, 1960s, he manages to build a portal. <laughs> and out of the portal, um, we get the Legion of Supervillains. So Your necessity is the mother of invention. I, I guess so. Uh, these these guys ended up being uh, an ongoing team. Um, according to uh, the DC Wiki, 48 appearances of this team uh pre uh pre zero hour mm. uh which which is pretty significant so you know to me it's a team that uh, has legs uh it's changed after zero hour which was kind of a, a, the change of the timeline um but in terms of this book there are two 9.6s on the census and the sales of the 9.6s are ancient as well so i really <laughs> think they're really relevant uh but just to, just in case it was it was 11,400 for this book back in 20 i think it was 2013 mm -hmm. um 7.0 is though now um the sale this just uh this past month was uh $220 so it's it's really it's a huge range for this book 
And I, I think there are some um, there are some t treasures to be had in the lower grades. Uh, two twenty. I mean, why not? Right. It's right. Like, right. It's almost like a, a DC Silver Age is so undervalued. You guys, you guys are right. Um, the next one I have is I'm shocked uh, that you did not pick this, Richard. I was waiting to see it on your list, and so I thought, well, if you're not going to do it, I am, and that is Hawkman number four, which is the first appearance of your girl Zatanna. Mm -hmm. There have been a few movie rumors floating around about a Zatanna movie, but nothing's been announced. Uh, she is still a hugely popular character. I think the biggest detriment to this book is the cover. She's not on it. Right. She's not featured. She's not mentioned. It's, you know, poor Hawkman getting caught by a magnet. Ooh. Uh, you know, whereas if she was on the cover, I think this book would probably be double, if not triple what it sells for now. Now, having said this, a 9.6 sold in September for $20,000. So <laughs> your, <my> point. <laughs> your, your mileage may vary when it comes to the word underrated here. My thing is the lower grades here. Um, you can grab a 7.5 for under $1,500 still. Mm -hmm. You will not be able to do that once a movie is announced. I'm just telling you people. Yeah, I mean, this this character is, uh, if it comes to the, the big screen or even the small screen, it's one of those attractive characters. She's a very attractive individual, but it's just a really cool a concept for a character. You know, for her to cast spells, she has to say the words backwards, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, I, I really see uh, this again. Uh, while while it's not cheap, uh, I do think there's huge amount of room for this book to grow in value. Uh, let me put it in perspective, and it, and it always kind of bums me out when I say this stuff out loud because it makes me realize how old we are. <laughs> this book is going on sixty years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, a first appearance, 60 years old, 7.0 or 7.5 for under $1,500. It's kind of a slam dunk in my, in my view. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You, what's your next one? I see it's right in the middle of Batmania. Yeah, this is Batman number 169. This is a second appearance of the Penguin. Uh, we all know first appearances, again, are, are always in demand and they're really hot. Uh, there's a first appearance of... Um, of the Riddler, for example, in Batman 171, which is right. really expensive. Uh, this is a book that I think really people have just not really paid attention to. Now, I, I say that, and, and the prices on some of these books are still pretty high uh, in terms of if you get the 9.8s and 9.6s, but the lower grades are much, much more affordable. Um, this is an example of people just not paying attention to DC keys, in my opinion. Uh, the night, there's a 9.8 9 .8 sale for a pedigree book. Mm. Uh, which was ten thousand dollars, ten thousand eight hundred dollars, and then but a, a nine six from January of this year went for fourteen hundred dollars. Wow, there is a hockey stick for you. Yeah, you know, I, I'm 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 assuming that nine eight was it got a boost because of the pedigree. Sure, and I'm sure I'm assuming it's nine eight. eight is yeah, it's a nine eight, but fourteen hundred dollars for a nine six of of uh, a book of 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 this caliber, I think, is really really underrated. Yeah, it's kind of like the Riddler in that in the respect that, you know, if they had a first appearance in the Golden Age and then just nothing for years and years. And so they re started reviving these heroes for the new look Batman in the Silver Age. And mm -hmm. uh, this is the run of books, 171 in particular, that inspired the TV series. So uh, another good reason why to pick that one up mm -hmm. if you are a Batmaniac. All right. My last one is a John book. It's not all. <laughs> it is not Brother Power the Geek. Uh, it is not anything like that. However, it is Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, number 106. Uh, an inspiring story where Lois Lane decides to truly write a story that reflects the black experience in America. She must become a black woman for 24 hours. Uh, <laughs> She uses, of course, a Superman Fortress of Solitude moldy, changey thingy that changes her to a black woman for 24 hours. She goes to the ghetto, lives with black people, and solves racism in all that, that 24 hours. It's awesome. Yeah, boy. No more problems. Thanks, Lois. <laughs> Seriously, though, it's the, the the campy level of this is through the roof. The story is titled I Am Curious Black, which is a play on the movie I Am Curious Yellow. Mm -hmm. we're, we're brilliant there. Um, 
hilariously misguided. Maybe the heart was in the right place, but, you know, again, white savior coming in. Uh, well, was it a white savior uh, complex in this case? Because she turned black, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This book, oh, yeah. I've owned this book several times. I have to buy it every time I see it. It always, when I put it up for sale, it sells immediately. People know this. They love it. Uh, a 9.4 sold in February this year for $1,429. Uh, no uh, coincidence or irony. It's a super tough black cover. <laughs> oh, you know, I almost picked this book. I've, you're, you're really funny. I had this book in mind when I made this list. Um how can you not? It's awesome. <laughs> it it yeah, it, it is misguided is is a good I, I think I think it's in in context, like every one of these kinds of books, you gotta take it in context to the time it was it was written. And uh from that aspect and you know the subject matter, which is a comic book, it's you're right, it is hilarious. It is it is um an interesting take on the subject. It's not a serious one though. Um, and it has this piece of, you know, Superman, Superman legacy, you know, it's, it's definitely a part of the backstory that makes up Superman. So, you know, kudos on this book. I think uh, I'm with you. If, if I ever come across one raw, I would buy one. I have yet to come across one. Um, oh man, definitely... I super high grade copy. I bought at earth Two in Sherman Oaks, California years ago. I got it slabbed. It came back a nine, four. Oh, wow. Yeah. I sold it in the big purge. I wish I had not. Yeah, this this is one of those books. If you're looking for a a broad stroke uh, approach to collecting Superman, you want to get all the 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 different aspects. This is a good this is a good pickup. Uh, what what I love about it is, you know, obviously the comic book industry learned from this experience and this book and never did it again. Oh wait, did the Punisher turn black in the '80s? I forgot. Oh yeah, I guess we just don't learn from history, do we? <laughs> I mean, learn from history. That Punisher book was a little like almost over 25 years ago. Ah, it's the 25 year rule. <laughs> All right. A little, little better uh, comic book being featured this week in the 25 year rule, especially when we're talking about diversity in comics. And that is Heroes number one. Have you heard of this book, Richard? I have not. Me neither. Uh, this is one of the more obscure milestone books. Uh, DC's Milestone Media launched in the early 90s. It was awesome. You had great books like Blood Syndicate by Ivan Velez Jr. and Chris Cross. You had, of course, Icon and our boy Static, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, this book, Heroes, was near the end of Milestone's initial life. It was kind of like a proto champions, your champions, not my champions. Uh, but it was, you know, static and younger heroes from the milestone universe forming a super group. Uh, I love that there are actual characters in this book named Donner and Blitzen. And they're a lesbian couple. They're not reindeer. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, this book was basically a relaunch, uh, a more appealing relaunch of the Shadow Cabinet team that was uh, a team book in the Milestone universe. However, like I said, Milestone was near the end of its initial existence. And so this was quickly changed from an ongoing to a six issue miniseries. <laughs> uh, yeah, never a good sign when you launch a book and then like an issue later. Oh, by the way, we meant to say it was a six issue miniseries. Uh, but. I've never seen it. I've never seen it in the wild. I've never seen this book. I was doing some research in 1996 and I saw this and I was like, I thought I knew all the milestone books right down to zombie, but mm -hmm. this one really just missed me completely. Yeah, absolutely. I have, I have not seen this title before either. Did you ever get into any of the milestone books when you were buying books back in the nineties? No, I did not. I, I actually didn't know about static until the TV show. Really? Yeah. Wow. I used to, I used to read, uh, Blood Syndicate was my jam. That was the one I really liked. Uh, anything Christopher Priest did. I, so I read uh, Zombie uh, and a few others. But uh, I'm glad they're kind of coming back. I, I haven't been impressed by the new uh, Icon and Rocket and Static titles. I bought them. I kind of breezed through them. Yeah, I did too. And, I, you, you know, there's a nostalgia factor that I think you go towards these books 
no, no matter how, how good it is, you know, it, it, it just may not live up to that, to that memory. Well, maybe it's time to talk about books that do live up to the memory, which is uh, books from our past, our underrated books of the week. What's yours, Richard? I see it and I'm, I'm nodding my head in approval. Oh, you are. You, so you are familiar with this book. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this, I, my, the book is Mystery, Thrilling Detective Adventures, number one. Anybody who grew up and was buying comic books in, this is 1983, so early, mm -hmm. early 80s, has seen this book on the shelf. Uh, it's, it's a perennial, in, in, to me, in, in, in dollar bin books uh, bo boxes as well. Uh, Miss Tree is a detective, kind of a hard-boiled detective, a female detective. Uh, she has a very distinctive hairstyle, which she carried through uh, four different publishers. She had she was published in Eclipse, Aardvark, Vanaheim, wasn't aware of that, <laughs> Renegade Press, and then DC actually yeah. pub published her. Miss Tree Quarterly, I remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a secretary of uh, the 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 actual artist says she was the secretary of Mike Hammer, <laughs> the the uh, the character from the novels. Uh, she gets married to him and he gets killed on, and, uh, <laughs> her name also is Michael, strangely enough. <laughs> um, so she, she continues and she goes on a vendetta against, uh, a, um, mafia crime family. Kind of sounds like the Punisher a bit, doesn't it? A bit. Written by Max Allen Collins, who wrote Dick Tracy for years and wrote a lot of, uh, hard boiled detective novels. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I, I also, um, you know, doing research on it, Frank Miller was the, uh, one of the writers on this. Really? And, yeah. And he's also given artist credit, too. I wonder if he did a pinup or something or a little short story, because this was really Max Allen Collins and Terry Beatty's mm -hmm. baby. Uh, and it was it was great. It was uh, really divisive in fandom. If you read old comics journals, you'll see they were not fans of Terry Beatty's art and they were just vicious to him. And he would write into their letters pages, calling them basically jerks. And it's, really, <laughs> it's fun stuff. It's, this is a book I, you know, I, I can't say that it was my favorite book, but, you know, I would buy back, back in the day, you could for 20 bucks a week, you could buy a stack of comics like oh, yeah. this big. And, you know, mystery was always in my, in my, my pull list and I would read it. And, um, it's but it really it has was controversial to a degree, but it really wasn't well remembered. Uh, this this particular book, I looked at the CGC census. There are six books on the census, uh, census six total of which there is one nine point eight. Then I went over to GPA and I looked, and there are only two books on the census or on GPA's list. There's a nine point four. And it's listed for one dollar. Oh, I have never seen that oh. before. <laughs> Somebody I'm sold this lab for one dollar. We put it on eBay, and they got one bid. I guess. Uh, the sad thing is, there's also like an eight point five that also sold for a dollar. Oh. So not not a well loved book. Uh, I yeah. think just from the history of again, this is this is one of those early independents. Uh, it's 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 worth looking at. You and you can find it fairly easily. It is well remembered by uh, Marvel because they ripped it off for a character called Dakota North, uh, shamelessly ripped it off. And in fact, there was a house ad that used to run in the Marvel comics where it was a picture of Dakota North holding a gun, very mistree looking. And it said style, you know, Dakota North on sale by monthly by Marvel. And so the Miss Tree people saw that and they did another ad, which is the same pose with Miss Tree. And it says substance. This tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's something you got to say about her. She she took, was a take no no prisoners kind of violence is the answer kind of character uh, who was incarcerated because of what she did. She was also put in a mental institute because of what she did. Um, it's 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 a complex, a more complex character than you typically see for one of these one of these um, gumshoe kind of titles. It's hard boiled like an egg. All right. Uh, my underrated book of the week is none other than Grew the Wanderer, number one from Pacific Comics, the first solo Grew title. Now, he first appeared in Star Slayer, of course, as a backup, but this is the first full Grew issue on his own. Sergio Aragona is a Mark of Van Nier. Uh, I don't know if you saw the news this week. A Grew animated movie and or series, we don't know yet, has been announced-ish. Basically, somebody has the rights and they're shopping them around right now. 
The last sale of a 9.8 of this book was just this month for $525. Now, that has shot up from the 12-month average of $161. So someone's excited about the movie announcement. There are 127 9.8s on the CGC census. I'm here to tell you guys, do not sleep on Gru. I'll tell you this from my experience managing a comic shop back in the day. This book has a huge fan base that extends far beyond the typical comic book nerds. I had several what I called civilians who used to come into the comic shop only to buy Gru and Conan. Those are the only two books they bought. They would come in and they wouldn't, they don't want to start a file. They don't want to start a hold service. I just want a copy of Gru and a copy of Conan every month, please. Month in, month out. Uh, so when Gru hits the small screen or the silver screen or whatever's going to happen, I think you're really going to be glad that you uh, leaned into Gru now. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Gru. Um, it's um, it's another one of those books that I bought um, back in the day as part of my part of my uh, pull list. I have to say, it's at the time I wasn't as big of a you know Gru and Usagi kind of vied in my head in terms of characters, and Usagi almost always won in that in that battle. But no, you have Stan Sakai doing work on both books, right? Yeah. Right, and I but I, I think Gru is more tongue in cheek. And, you know, you have to appreciate the sense of humor and, um, and that I think I, that's why I kind of, uh, uh, kind of gravitated to Usagi instead, but you're right. Stan did, did work for, for both titles, which is, which yeah. is awesome. Don't forget about the first appearance of Shaka, the first appearance of Roferto, his dog. There's lots of keys in this, uh, these yeah. crew runs and, you know, they're kind of still bopping around in dollar bin boxes. You can scoop them up. So check out Guru. That is going to do it for this week, or at least for the Monday episode. Uh, Richard, where can they find us? What can they do? Well, they can go to Instagram and Facebook and go to Bronze and Modern Gods, or they can go to the website that John has graciously provided and go to bronzeandmoderngods.com. All right. We will see you guys later in the week. Have a good one. Yeah, everybody stay safe. <laughs>